Welcome, 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 welcome. This is Fuse Marriages. As you see, you know what? If you guys are returners, you don't see my my co-pilot that's sitting over here. Um, she is actually giving me the platform to talk about what I want to talk about. Um, this is going to be an interesting topic that we're going we gonna to actually cover. So with that being said, she'll be back. She'll be back actually next week. She may have something special planned for you guys. And then uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what it's about. Um, so hopefully, how y'all feeling? Hopefully y'all are feeling okay. Hopefully y'all are following us on social media at Fused Marriages. We mentioned we have a uh, thing that we are part of with FusedRadio.com. There's a lot of other amazing, amazing broadcasters on, on there. We're on there as well. But check it out, FusedRadio.com. Also, just hit us up. Hit us up on, on, on social media. Like, subscribe, do all the stuff. If you like the content, just share, you know, share with somebody. And we'll be uh, hopefully communicating back and forth. So let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. So first of all, I believe that every single woman needs to hear what I'm about to say. You ask why, right? Why do you need to hear what I'm about to say? I think the topic I'm about to cover actually affects just about every single relationship that's ever been had between a man and a woman in some shape, form or fashion. And some people are stuck in this place. And some people have figured it out. So I'm going to shed some light on some things that just from the male perspective that may not be as obvious to women. OK, and what I'm going to talk about today is the demasculation of men. All right. And there is a clear definition of what demasculation is. If you don't know what that means, I'm going to read the definition for you real quick here. And just so you have a little bit better frame of reference of, of, of where we're going to potentially take this. And demasculation, to demasculate, to deprive of strength, vigor, or spirit, to weaken, to deprive of utility or procreative power, to castrate. All right. Yeah, that, that's pretty deep and heavy, right, of where that particular word could be taking us, right? And really, I was uh, talking to a friend of mine, and he was going through some issues at, at the house. He was telling me about, you know, how his kids were disrespecting him, how his wife doesn't necessarily trust him no more, um, not because he was cheating, but just maybe trusted decision-making, um, he was actually dealing with some things with work and, and, and the family was just looking at him differently. And he basically was telling me, he was saying, you know what? I need to leave. And I asked him why I said, why do you, why do you need to leave? He said, well, I'm not the man of my house anymore. I'm like, what? Not the man of your house. Is there another man there? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, there's not another man there. They just don't see me talking about they, his wife and his kids don't see him as a man anymore and it got me to thinking I'm like wow that's heavy right for a man to get to the point where he doesn't feel he's the man of his own house anymore and like it's just it just the idea of that even the psychology of that and having and I'm talking about from a man's perspective to be able to have to deal with that that's a pretty heavy burden, right? Because I don't think we're naturally, we don't naturally view ourselves in that way, right? And as we get into this topic about the demasculation, I don't think it really starts when a, when a man or woman get into a relationship. I think it starts earlier than that. I think it starts very, very, very early. So we're going to start off with the, you know, point number one of, of why this is potentially happening, right? And the issue of how early does it start? So women have made a lot of contributions and a lot of strides over the over the over the last, you know, 50 years and, you know, getting into corporate America. And really, you know what? Unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because it's like it's happened like this played out. But like there's a there's a quite a few single mothers out there in, in our society and single mothers that are raising kids. 
um, and some of them are boys and they're doing actually the best that they can in trying to raise trying to raise those boys. But I think there is a gap in where a woman understanding how a young boy needs to be raised and to no fault of their own. And the idea of a woman trying to raise a boy on her own is very difficult. And I think a lot of women, y'all recognize that, right? Y'all recognize like, like, hey, you know what? I got this young boy. I don't really understand, you know, once you get to a certain age of what he needs to do and not do. Um, young boys, we're actually, you know, we press the envelope. That's our, that's our normal psyche. And I say press the envelope. And I'm talking about starting off at, you know, two, three years old. We the ones that are, you know, getting on the porch and running off with a towel tied around our neck, trying to jump off thinking we a superhero. You know, we don't, we don't, we, we're the ones, you know, in the dirt, just kind of like getting our feet and nails dirty coming in, then like eating our food like it ain't no big deal. And you may look at that like, oh, okay, that's nasty. I don't need to be doing that, this, that, and the other. But in reality, that's part of being a boy and really a boy in the process of becoming a young man. The psychology of being, okay, you know what? I'm grimy. I'm dirty. I press the envelope. And if a woman, a mother in this case, try to take that away at an early age, okay, hey, boy, you know what? Don't you come in here. Don't, stop running around the house. Stop, you know, don't get in that dirt. That's who he is. And I think women and mothers don't necessarily realize that. That's part of him being a boy and eventually becoming a man. And if you take that away at some point in issue, you know what? He going to turn to something else or something different on the inside. And it's going to reflect on the outside. The demasculation process is what we're talking about. The demasculation of boys and ultimately of men like when they get in relationships. And the ability to to really for for women need to really kind of understand and say, OK, you know what? Maybe I don't have the answers. And a lot of y'all recognize that. So I'm not trying to say that this is all women, but some women necessarily do do not. Um, I was talking to a young lady and, and uh, she has he had two boys. And uh, I think they were outside, they were playing or doing something or, you know, need to come in and get dressed. And she said, OK, come on, boys, let's let's come in and uh, let's let's get ready and take a shower, get ready to eat. Cool. Right. No big deal. Come in. Got to clean up. You know what I mean? Before you get ready to eat. She said uh, he's and the boy said, hey, mama, can uh, I, I need I need two washcloths. You know, I only have one. He said, OK, hold on. Let me go get you your other washcloth. And in my mind, I was like two washcloths for a boy. Oh, really, there's two washcloths in general. I didn't really understand for a boy or girl. It didn't really matter. Two washcloths in general. What does, why do you need two washcloths? So I asked the question. I said, uh, I'm sorry, but 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 why why did you give him, you know, why did he ask for it and why did you give him two washcloths? She was like, well, one of the washcloths is for his body. The other one is for his face. I was like, what in the world? I had no concept of what the, what that even meant. Why would I use one washcloth for my body and another for my face? I didn't necessarily link that up as a man to say, okay, this is automatic, something that we need. And I'm thinking like, okay, I can't imagine this young fella at the point in time, he might've been seven or eight, getting into high school, getting into college and, you know, and going into the locker room and taking a shower with some other guys and like, Hey, I need, hey, coach, I need, I need another washcloth for my, you know, for my face and for my body. And pe- them boys are going to laugh at him like you will never believe before. They're going to be like, what in the world is going on? Because we don't do that. And matter of fact, most men, we might not even use a washcloth. We might use our hand. And we might not even use Dove. We might be using Coast. We might be using, you know, some cheap soap, let uh, 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 Lever 2000. Some of y'all don't even know what that is, but it's, it's some stuff out there. And so we ain't thinking about, you no know, like, okay, I need to moisturize my skin and making sure it's good and this, that, and the other. And y'all may be having to deal with some men or seeing some boys raised that way. And it's like, they are different. And it's not a bad different, but you got to understand they different. I don't think that normal psychology of a man is supposed to be wired that way. And those are just kind of like little examples of what that looks like. Right. And then so 
the early part of it starting on, right, of where, you know, this demasculation process, it's by accident at first. By first, at first with these young boys. So at some point, these young boys get into relationships, right? They become 20, 21, 30, 40, whatever, get in relationships. And now they have these tendencies that I'm not going to say that they're not manly, but they're different from maybe what man qualities need to be in order to make sure the household, the, 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 the order of the house is, is, is pushed in the right direction. And right can be debated, right? What's right and what's wrong? I'm saying in this case, the order is being challenged to, to, uh, in, in, in the point of where, you know what, there's some differences that the woman may believe that what he should be doing and what the man think he should be doing. And the demasculation process come, comes into play. And I'm going to go back to uh, an example of how early I think this actually started. We talked about the boys, but I think this actually started with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, you're like, Michael, how are you tying this to Adam and Eve? All right, all right, let me break this down for you. So we know that, you know what, the whole story, I don't care if you went to church or not with the church, everybody knows the story of Adam and Eve, right? And when Adam, first day, you know, we know that Eve actually took a bite of the apple first. If you don't know, that's what happened. Biblically speaking, Eve took a bite of the apple first. And then she offered it to Adam. Okay. And Adam took a bite. God gave Adam the instructions not to eat from this particular tree. Eve took a bite, right? She did wrong, but he didn't give Eve the instructions. He gave Adam the instructions. Adam still took a bite because Eve asked. Why is that? One thing that women have to know. Oh, hear me loud and clear. And we're going to dissect. Hopefully we can kind of correct and move forward and really try to figure out how can we fix it. But one thing that women have to know, y'all have to know, if a man loves you, he's probably going to give in. Give in. Like, why would he give in? Because the love that he has for you does not want to fight you. Now, it may go back and forth for a little bit, but even if you dead wrong, he going to be like, okay, cool. You can have it. And some of y'all may have had some men that, that dealt with that like that, right? They were fighting for a little bit. And all of a sudden, like, you know what? You got it. You can have it. And ultimately, you know what? The wrong decisions are made. The burden then is not placed on the man's shoulders. It's placed on the woman's shoulders. And it's really not the woman's fault, but because the fact that the man has gave in, got demasculated from the idea of the woman like, no, nah, come on, you need to eat this apple. You need to pick a bite of this. That's what Eve was saying. If I'm like, you know, I'm reenacting. The bite, the apple is, is you know what? Come on, Adam. You know, I took a bite. Ain't nothing happened to me. You need to take this. Come on, you old weak man. You you can't believe it. See, look, I'm I'm strong. You, I didn't took it. This ain't God ain't done nothing. And, uh, you know, Adam takes a bite. And all of a sudden, you know what? You know, pun intended words, all hell breaks loose. Right. And you know what? And the downfall happens. And the burden shouldn't have been on Eve. It should have been on Adam. But because Adam, in my opinion, how I'm using this was demasculated because of how much he loved Eve. Eve convinced him to do it. She talked him, you know, what she probably was in his ear. Come on, take it. Come on, bite it. Come on, come on, come on. You know how I do when I chase him around the house whenever y'all, we know we arguing or whatever, this, that, and the other. Y'all just in our ear. He, see, stop. He need to come on, do this. Be like this. Hold on. I can't believe you did this. Obviously, you know what? Okay, what you need me to do? What you need me to do? And then we do it. We get demasculated, right? We get demasculated. So, um, we gonna, I'm going to talk about this one point and we're going to take a, a, a break real quick, but... I was reading this book, The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And I'm going to link all this up and tie it how it all fits in, in the different pieces. But Sun Tzu talks about some principles of life, right? And these principles of life, and it's going to trust and believe, it's going to tie this back in. Trust and believe. But the principles of life he talks about, I have them, have them actually here. It's called The Art of War. The Art of War. And he talks about choosing your battles. Okay, that's one principle he kind of talks about. He also talks about timing is essential he talks about you know what knowing yourself okay and then one of the more, one of the more important points that i actually like he talks about you know the best way to win is not to fight at all okay you're like what does that got to do with everything we talking about 
I'm going to link this up. We're going to take a short break. I'm going to link this back up and we'll be right back after this short break. Hey, y'all, we just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for listening. We appreciate your support. Um, So if you haven't yet, make sure that you subscribe, follow us on all social media. And oh, we have this thing that we want you to check out fusedradio.com. There are other broadcasters that you will hear from. You're really going to love it. Um, So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You all are so wonderful. Um, And we look forward to connecting with you more in the future. All right. We are back. We were just talking about um, uh, the art of war by Sun Tzu. And uh, the topic is the demasculation of men. And I was just trying to explain how this book, The Art of War, is really tied into really where I'm trying to take this conversation. Okay, so this whole book about the art of war, I kind of mentioned, you know, the principles, and I mentioned them again, that time is essential, know yourself, the best way uh, to win is not to fight at all. Okay, he's got these principles, right? And it's really about, you know what, how you really attack a problem, right? In this case, he's talking about war, but you can look at it, hey, how do you attack an issue? And there's really a process of doing that. Okay, so similarly, like, you know what, it had me thinking like, okay, there's a process of really how a house needs to be set up. Okay, this may be controversial to the point of people may disagree with it, which I'm fine with. But it's my perspective on on really what I believe and how I think it it works the best Um, and really how a household needs to be set up in regards to um, making sure everything is moving in the right direction. Okay. I personally don't believe that, you know, I'm tying this back into this book here. I don't really believe like, you know, there's there's like, you know, two generals. Right. There shouldn't be two generals. I don't know how you win a a, a war by having two generals. And that's kind of even what the book talks about. Right. And that's why I kind of bring the principles in there. You can't you got to have some structure in organizations with some generals, some colonels, some lieutenants, some soldiers in order to achieve what you're trying to achieve, whether it's a business, whether it's a family, whether it's, you know what, some career objectives, whatever it is, you got to have something and somebody driving it and the order has to be there. That's what the whole book is really kind of making people think about. So check it out. It's relating to this in in, in that way. Um, Too many times I believe that, you know, in, in households where, you know, the burden falls on, I'm talking about now, husband and wife have kids, this, that, and the other, um, the burden often gets placed on the woman, right? I don't think women should be carrying the burden of the day-to-day stuff that's going on in the household. I think that's responsibility of a man. And some women have set it up that way on purpose. Like, you know what? I don't trust my man. He ain't able to, he not capable. He can't bring an income. He doesn't know how to deal deal with the kids, whatever, all the stuff that life brings you, right? And a lot of women say, you know what? Nope. He's not capable. I'm going to do it. Right. I'm going to do it. So then that man gets demasculated. And you know what? He's like, you know what? He is the uh, colonel or the lieutenant in the household. Um, And the woman is a general. And that may work for some of y'all. It may work. I'm not saying that's not like something that can't work that way. But the one thing I have seen when it does get set up that way is that, you know, hold on. Something goes wrong, right? And uh, issues happen, whether it's financial, whether it's with the kids, whether it's uh, at work or whatever have you. And the woman, that's the general in this case, she's like, well, hey, you know what? Hey, uh, 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 John, can you come, you know, help me take care of this? This guy at the at the dealership is talking crazy to me. He's a man. I need you to come handle it. And he's like, hold on. And the, and, and the husband's like, man, you, you've been the general. Why you want me to come handle your stuff now? Like, you don't, you don't, you're looking at me, wanting me to step in. And the whole time I've been being demasculated and I've been, I'm I'm going to be a colonel. I didn't gave in. I'm Adam in this case. If you didn't hear the first part, you know what? Adam gave in, I believe, for uh, an ability to, to, to really step up and be the man with Adam and Eve. Eve took a bite. Adam took a, took a bite after that. He got demasculated. And the burden now falls on the woman's shoulders, which that should not be the case. Right. I don't think it was designed. The order was not set up for the burden of life to fall on the woman's shoulders. Y'all are great, great, great support people and great and innovators. 
great y'all that glue to put you know keep everything together and a lot of times y'all are the engine to kind of make sure things to keep running but that total burden of life i believe was meant to fall on the shoulders of a man and not of of a woman so things get out of whack right and some of that we talked about you know starts off with young boys being raised by single mothers and that's how they see you know what oh that's normal you know i was watching a show um Ready to Love, if you haven't seen it, it's on the own. It's, I think it's a season I just passed, season two just passed. But it was one, there was a scene where a, a lady asked, hey, hey, what do you think about, you know, a man and, and finances and, like, handling, like, you know, the mortgage, the day-to-day bills, this, that, and the other, woo do woo And uh, this gentleman said, hey, well, you know what? I think it's 50-50. And it was a complete turn off to this woman. She's like, 50-50? I'm like, she like, I'm supposed to be a helpmate. I mean, I, I don't have no problems here right now. I'm supporting myself, this, that, and the other. But if you come in thinking that it's going to be 50-50, like, I don't really I don't really vibe in that way as far as relationship goes. And a lot of times that's happened. I would, I would but guess, you know what, this gentleman probably was raised by a woman. I don't know that for a fact, but just how he actually approached the situation is like, you know what, he didn't say, in my opinion, he should have said, you know what, hey, I got you. Whatever's needed. I got you. If I got to work 10 jobs, I got you. You know what? That's my responsibility, particularly if I love you and I gave a vow to you. You know what? I'm, I'm going to make sure you good. I'm not putting you out there to go do anything unless we decide. Not because you have to or this, that, and the other, but we just going to decide as husband and wife of what's needed for this family to make it work. Right. Take that leadership and step in the front and do that. All right. So let's start off with it early on how it starts. It's, it's some, some mothers that listen that are raising boys and and you might even have a grown son, right? You might be having a boy that's seven or eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, whatever age. And you've been like talking to him and dealing with him in a certain way. And I've seen this, I witnessed this and it like, it like bothers me to the point where like, man, what is this boy uh, in this case, maybe even a man gonna be like when he get a woman? And it starts off early by, you know what, the demasculation process where, you know what, the mother's bringing, you know, the boy to food to his room. He in the room playing the video games. Some of y'all got boys that hear the chopsticks playing video games, right? Bring the food to his door. Hey, what do you need? Here you go. Here's your food. Okay. He ain't got to get up. He ain't got to do nothing. He ain't got to say thank you. This, that, and none of that. Bringing the food to his door. Then he ain't got to clean up. His room is all messy. You know what? He ain't going to wash no clothes. He ain't helping with the dishes. Ain't taking out no trash. Because as a mother, you're thinking like, okay, I'm just going to give him all the love and he going to figure it out at some point. We don't figure it out. That ain't how we work as men. All right. We do not figure it out. And the fact that you give us that template of saying this is what's normal as a young boy and even as a man you say, you know, we got we got some single men out there. I'm sorry, some mothers that are that are raising some boys that ain't married yet, and they may be in their 20s and 30s. The same principle applies to that. And it's like you cannot allow yourself as a mother to make this man weak, to make him sorry. He ain't cutting no grass. You know what I mean? He ain't like he ain't trying to go out there and make it on his own. Like to me, there's no reason once a boy gets a certain age, like, hey, you know what? Go try some stuff. You're a boy. I ain't, ain't got to worry about you in certain scenarios of life as I got to worry about my daughters. But as a boy, you know what? You can go. Go get your, get your roommate. You know what I mean? Try to make it your deficiency apartment. You know what I mean? If you got to walk to work, whatever it is, hey, that's part of if you're a mother, you have to, like, take that mentality. And if you, you don't feel comfortable with that, you got to figure out how to surround your boy, your young men with other men that can give them these principles, right? And to show them like, hey, you know what? No, no, no. We don't wash ourselves with two washcloths. I might use my hand to wash myself. And you may think that's small and mine, like, oh, I can't believe it. he even saying this, is that, and the other. But that plays into the psyche of who he is as a man. It plays into the psyche of who he is as a man. And we cannot keep having situations where, you know what? Our men are, are not taking the lead. And then we cannot keep having situations where our women 
are demasculating our men to say, you know what? No, nah, you can't do this. You don't need to do this. And thinking that they win it by having him do whatever they want to do and thinking, okay, you know what? I got him. He do whatever I want to do. This, that, and the other. He weak. Y'all don't say it, but y'all think it. He weak. This, that, and the other. But you know what? He loved me, so I'm going to stay with him anyway. And and all this, that, and the third. So when that happens, it to me, it, it damages the fabric of what a home should be, what our kids should be emulating, what society needs to have. And this is not to say you cannot have a strong woman. Strongness does not, or, or the ability to be strong does not necessarily equate to saying, you know what, who is in the front, who is in the back, right? It's about the entire unit. Can y'all be strong together, right? There's certain qualities that I believe women bring to the table and certain qualities that men bring to the table. And, um, and I'm going to give this example here of where, you know, what I think is real practical to, to, to women maybe can, can relate to it. Because y'all need to hear this and hopefully hear hear it loud and clear. I was I was I was talking to uh, uh, my my wife about um, she was in the kitchen, um, and actually she was actually in her mother in law kitchen, my mother's kitchen, and she was trying to make something right. And my mother comes in there and starts to make something too, right. So my wife leaves leaves the kitchen. She's like, I said, okay, well, are you not cooking anymore? She said, uh. She said, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to cook. I'm just going to wait until your mother is done. I said, why? Both of y'all can be in the be in the kitchen cooking at the same time. You know what I mean? The kitchen's big enough. You know what I mean? It's, y'all can it's a double oven, all this other kind of stuff, move around, uh, all kind of space. She said, no, 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 no. She told me, she said, it can't be two chefs in the kitchen. I said, oh, okay. Okay. I said, why? Because she said, you know what? When things flow, even though y'all are cooking and moving around, when you got two chefs, see, sometimes you cross over and bump into each other. She didn't know it, but she was speaking about something that was so deep to me that was ridiculous, right? Where you can't have two chefs in the kitchen. So if we're in a household, husband and wife, both people cannot be taking the lead, right? And unfortunately, some people have actually, you know, tied themselves with men in this case that are not good leaders, right? And he's trying, but he just maybe doesn't have the qualities to be a good leader. But in his heart, he wants to be because the reason why, you know what, he keeps trying to figure out and do different stuff. This, that, and the other. He, he really wants to be, but he doesn't have the qualities. Maybe raised by a woman, never saw a man, what, what good leadership qualities look like. Even when it ain't about finance, I ain't talking about money being made or nothing like that. I'm not talking about it. none of that. I'm talking about the psychology of base being able to lead a household from point A to point B to point C to point D. And the ability for a man to do that then becomes, you know what, on how he was raised. We kind of talked about that. And then once he gets into the household, does that woman allow him to be that particular type of leader? And if you have a woman taking a leadership role, unless he's a weak guy, he probably ain't going to take the back seat naturally he's not gonna do it now he may appear to take the back seat but he's not gonna take the back seat in a, in a natural sense say okay you know what? i just give in and that's what actually what happens right he gives in and says okay you know what now you can do it and and then the situation gets out of whack the stuff gets all kind of crazy because in his heart he wants to be a man he's a warrior he wants to lead he wants to as much as possible but he can't so how do we fix it right Let's take the last few minutes to talk about how do you fix it. First of all, women that have boys, right, and you raised by by and you're raising boys by yourself. Um, you have an uncle, you have a brother, you have friends, right, that are males, and um, you have to get your boys around some other men. I don't care what age they are, right. I'm saying I don't care what age your boy is. If your boy is three, five, ten, twenty-five, whatever, doesn't matter. If he's an adult, encourage him, hey, you know what, Get, join some men groups. You know what, I gave you everything I could as you were growing up, but you need to join some some men groups and, you know, even get some some men from church or your work or some uncles, whatever, to call them up every now and again to kind of check in on them. That's the first thing. Get your boys around some some other men. The second thing, if you have full control over your boy, and I say full control with, you know, he's young enough um, um, and, and like, you know, I'm saying 
well, 18 and below in your household and you're raising by yourself, let him be a boy. And I say, what I mean by that, let him press the envelope, press the envelope in the aspect of, you know what? He going to be dirty. He going to go out there and get his hands dirty. going to play a roll around in dirt. Going to come with, you know, food in his hair. That's part of this being that extra boy of really that creativity of like, okay, hey, I can do this. And, and it's not a big deal. Let him run around the house a little bit. Now he can't tear up nothing. Cause we got, you know, stuff we're trying to keep, but he going to, Run around the house and be a little extra. He's not going to be sitting down, you know what, with his legs crossed and like, hey, everything is good. He's going he gonna to do a little bit more. Okay. So that's another thing. Make sure they do that. How else we fix it? Women. I, I hope that you have a man that's a man. If you have a man that's a man, what I mean by that, a man that's a man, he, he really is like trying to be the best person. He ain't out there cheating. He ain't out there not trying to work. He really trying to be the best he can. Don't demasculate him by just bumping in his ear so much that he gives in. He's going to give in, particularly if he loves you, he's going to be like, okay, you know what? You ain't going to notice no difference, but you're going to be like, man, he's like, man, he just kind of just, just there. He just doing whatever. Don't push him to the point where he gives in. You know what? If you want a man to lead, or, or maybe some women, y'all want the burden. Y'all want the burden, keep the situation how you want it. But if you want your man to lead, you, you got to let him often. He's he going to make the mistakes, but he's going to take the ownership of those mistakes too. Most men and real men will do that. Let them take the ownership mistake. You know what? Hey, I made my own decision here. I should have, you know, had the family do something else. We did this instead. I'm going to get it right. I'm going to make it right. And allow him to make it right. Um, so that's some just, just key things I want y'all to think about, right? Just the demasculation of men. We can correct this. We can, can, can fix this. I haven't discussed every single thing, right, in this short time. But hopefully I've given you enough to really think about. Keep the discussion going. Hit us up on social media at Fuse Marriages. You know what? We're going to make this happen. Next week, you will hear back from my co-host, my ride or die, Miss Tristan. So we will again, we'll see y'all next week. Peace. You're listening to Fuse with Tristan and Michael.